Now, first of all, let's look at in equations. So an in equation, there's, a, I guess, a bit of a definition of what an equation is. So a problem where we're trying to find possible values rather than a single value. An equation, we're trying to find a, usually a single value, whereas an in equation, there'll be a range of values as the answer. But the idea is still the same. What it is that we're trying to find, we make the subject of the equation. Now, a couple of key things. Because unlike an equals sign, an inequality sign can change. You can go from greater than to less than and vice versa. And when does it change? When you multiply or divide by a negative number, or as I prefer to think of it, if you change the sign, you change the sign. If you change the sign of the number, you change the inequality sign as well. So if you change the sign, you change the sign. Uh, the other one doesn't happen as often, but if you take the reciprocal of both sides, you also should change the inequality sign there as well. Because if you think about it, uh, three is bigger than two, but if you to turn it upside down, a third is not bigger than a half. It's less than a half. So if you take reciprocals, you should change the sign. But as I say, that, that's pretty rare we, we do that one. Okay, very, very basic one to start off with. I mean, 6x is less than 36. So just like an equation, we divide by 6. But I guess the reason I bring that up is more for the plotting of it on the number line. Uh, some people are paranoid and go, oh, my, my arrow has to be on the number line itself. Personally, I put it just above the line so it doesn't get lost in the line. So it's very clear that I'm talking about those. And in this case, the boundary is not included, so we have a, a hollow circle to indicate the endpoint's not included. Uh, unlike equations, we can have more than one sign in the one line. So I've got two less than or equal to signs here. That's okay, we still do it the same way, but now it's whatever I do to one thing, I do to everything, rather than what I do to one side, I do to the other. So first thing, I'll subtract six from all three, and now I'll divide everything by negative four, but I divide it by a negative number, so if I change the sign, I change the sign. And that's a horrible way of writing that. So we don't do that. Ooh, that's better. Okay, negative two is less than or equal to x, is less than or equal to one. And if I was to plot that one, the endpoints would be solid for this one because they're included, and this time I'm in between. That brings me to the correct way of writing inequalities. The algebraic solution should match the geometric solution. So something like that. There's a geometric solution to the problem. So therefore, I would write x is greater than five. Notice the arrow is pointing in the same direction as the inequality sign. So it sort of matches the picture. We don't write five is less than x. The grammar of it is wrong, okay? Because the question is, what values can x be? That's basically what they're asking. What values can x be? My answer is, oh, well, x can be greater than five. So grammatically, that's correct. To say five is less than x, is not grammatically correct, because you say five is less than x. You go, well, that's fantastic, but what can x be? Yeah? So what, it's less than five, I mean. So when I'm in between, so one like this, then again, it matches the number line. Four's on the left-hand side, six is on the right-hand side, and, uh, and we're in between there. The, the left-hand one's not included, though. So I wouldn't write it like that. I mean, that's just, well, ugly, really. I don't know about you. I, I see something like that, and I'm straight away I'm thinking something's wrong. So it's just, it just doesn't look right. Six on the left-hand side of four, it just doesn't happen. Definitely wouldn't write that. X is greater than four, or X is less than or equal to six, because that is wrong. Because I can think of any number, and it would satisfy that. Give me a number, any number. Come on, pick a number for me. 25. 25 would satisfy that because 25 is bigger than 4, and we've used the word or. If you really wanted to, and you don't, trust me, you don't, you would use the word and there, but I'm not even going to write that down because I'm not going to say that's acceptable because it's not acceptable, it's ugly, and we don't write them like that. All right, one like this then, when the end was the either side of the points. So again, I would write it like that. It looks like the picture. So four again is on the left-hand side of the six, but the inequality signs are pointing in the same direction as the arrows. It's a thing of beauty. 
That just looks funny. X is less than six. Pointing in. Oh, no, 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 no. That's just, nah. And for goodness sake, don't try and do something like that. Because that just doesn't make sense. Four is greater than or equal to X, which is greater than or equal to C. No. Again, that's just playing wrong. Okay. Let's move on from that then. So quadratic in equations. I mean, linear in equations, fair enough. We do them just like normal. Quadratics. I want to solve this one. Again, I'll start off doing it the same way and hopefully it will factorise. Multiplies together, give negative six. Adds together, give five. The temptation now, and again, it would be wrong to do this, but the temptation now is to say, oh, well, that means X is less than negative six or X is less than one. Because if it was an equation, I would have said equals two or equals two. But of course, it's wrong. So whether you draw a picture or you visualize it in your head, draw yourself up the parabola. We know that's a parabola. One and negative six are not included in this. There's the parabola. Think about what it's saying. It's saying, when is that parabola less than zero? Right? So what values is that parabola below the x-axis? Now, there's lots of points, but I'm only interested in the x-values. If I was to put every x value onto the x axis, then I'd get in between those two points. And there's the graphical solution of what I'm looking for. So I know the answer is x is in between minus 6 and 1. So as I say, whether you physically draw it or you do it in your head or other people like to just simply test points, like they know 1 and, six, uh, one and negative 6 are the key points. So I'll test a point that's in between and see if it works or not. And that's another way we could do that. Let's try another one. I don't know about you, but I really don't like negative x squareds. Maybe it's the negative, I don't know. But I find it much easier to factorise when it's positive. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. But of course, if I change the sign, I'll change the sign. So we now have x squared plus 3x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. That one does factorise. So I know my key points are 1 and negative 4. They're both included this time. Uh, because I've forced it to be a concave up parabola. So I'm now saying, when is that one above the x-axis? So I'm interested in those x values there. Essentially, your answer for a quadratic equation will always be either I'm in between the two key points or I'm on the outside of the two points. Uh, saying another way you could do it is just solve the equation, find those key points, and then test to see, am I in between? Am I on the outside? So that's another way you could do that. All right, let's have a look at absolute value in equations. This is where using the definition of absolute value comes in handy. Because now I say, oh, okay, you've got absolute value. That means either the positive of x plus five is less than two, or the negative x plus five is less than two. And then I don't get any issues with the inequality sign. So x is less than or equal to negative three on the left-hand side. The right-hand side, we get x is greater than or equal to negative 7. We're saying these have to happen. Uh, so let's plot. Well, there's x is less than or equal to negative 3. There's greater than or equal to negative 7. Uh, so our solution is in between. Negative 7 is less than x is less than negative 3. Okay, greater than or equal to 1, this one. So again, either it's positive or it's negative. Solving the left-hand side, I get greater than or equal to negative a third. Right hand side, I get less than or equal to negative one. Let's combine those ones. Well, they have no point of intersection. So therefore it must be, again, the ones where we're going on the outside, just like our picture looks. So we have X is less than or equal to negative one or X is greater than or equal to negative a third. What you could do, because you notice those solutions were exactly the same as a quadratic in equation. And it's not a coincidence, because another way you could solve this is to actually turn it into a quadratic. So if I have the absolute value of x plus 5 is less than 2, square both sides. Right? So squares are always positive, just like the absolute value is always positive. So x plus 5 squared is less than 4. And then solve that quadratic equation, and you'll see when we factorise it, there's our two solutions, negative 7 and negative 3, and that one will be one where the parabola is inside. Let's try the other one. Square both sides, and after playing around with all the numbers, eventually we get the same two uh, critical points, negative a third and negative one, and that one would have the solution on the outside. It's an alternative way. Now this one, in equations where you've got a pronumeral in the denominator, here's a very basic one, 
one on x is greater than or equal to three. I reckon I've seen about five different ways of solving this type of question. Find the value where the denominator is zero, because that's going to cause problems in our domain. So for this one, I know x can't equal zero. Then just solve it like it's actually an equation, not an inequation. Oh, one on x equals three. Well, x is a third. That creates two critical points. Exactly the same idea as with the quadratic inequalities and the absolute value ones. And so all I've got to do is, uh, well, whether again, whether I do it in my head or I, I physically write it, all I've got to do is test regions and see where I am. Um, so what point did I test? Oh, well, let's have a look at negative one. Again, you probably wouldn't write this down. Oh, okay, uh, one on negative one is greater than or equal to three. No, no, it's not. So I know I'm not there. Um, x is a quarter, sub that in, four, oh yes, that, that's true. So I know I'm in between, but just to make sure, test x equals one, one's greater than or equal to three. No, no, it's not. There's my solution straight away. So x is in between naught and a third, but notice naught is not included because that was the problem with our domain. Two over x plus three is less than five. So let's look after the domain first of all. I know x plus 3 can't equal 0, x can't equal negative 3. Solve it as if it's just an equation. And we just get a nice linear equation. x is minus 13 on 5. There's my two key points. Test. Um, oh, well, 0 is always an easy number to work with. 2 thirds is less than 5. Yes, it is. So 0 must be included. So I know I'm on the outside because once again, when the denominator is linear like that, and the others are just numbers, it's going to be just like uh, a quadratic inequality. I know I'm either going to be inside or on the outside. We can turn it into a quadratic yet again. And so this is the method, as I say, that probably would be the most popular method. So the first thing you do is multiply by the denominator squared. And the reason you do that, if you're multiplying by a square, you know it's positive, and you don't have to worry about changing the sign. See, if I was just to multiply by x, I don't know whether x is positive or negative, so I don't know whether to change the inequality sign. So that's why you'd multiply by the square. So we get x is greater than or equal to 3x squared. 3x squared less than x, or oh, sorry, 3x squared minus x is less than or equal to zero. Then we just go and solve it. And, uh, and we come up with the same two critical points. Again, however you come up with your solution, testing points, draw the picture, whatever. But remember, take care of the domain issue. And this is why I don't particularly like this method. Because you solve it like an inequation, quadratic inequation, but you end up with less than or equal to for that. If you haven't considered the domain problem, you're going to get the answer wrong. Because zero is not included. So we need to say, oh, hang on, x is not included. x equals zero is not included. Or a better way of writing it, of course, is like that. Zero is less than x, less than or equal to a third. And that would be the mistake that people make that use this method. So let's say, first way I showed you, it's sometimes called the critical points method, uh, is probably the most successful, uh, whereas this is probably the most common way people do it. Um, all right, let's have a look at the second example. So we would multiply by x plus 3 squared. Now, when you move everything over to the left, for goodness sake, don't expand out. So if you're going to use this method, don't expand out. Because remember, you're going to end up wanting to factorize. Well, they already have a common factor of x plus 3. So why expand out only to have to refactorize again? We'll leave that as a common factor. So I have x plus 3 outside of 5x plus 13 when I put that all together. And we get the obviously the answer we got before. Oh, but hang on a sec. X can't equal negative three, but in this case, it wouldn't have caused me a problem because it was just a greater than question. Oh, sorry, the original question was just a less than question. So already I was excluding the, the boundary point. All right, so 5A, a variety of inequations to solve.